Hey, I'm Ron. This is a Rockstar Paint Class, and today we're going to be painting something I call the Sinner, which is a tribute to legendary guitarist John Five. Uh, so if you guys order this kit already, so in your hands you're going to have two paint brushes. Uh, they're going to look something like this. One's a wedge brush, and then one is the fine brush. We're going to be using mostly the wedge brush today, the fine brush for detail. Okay, also in your kit, you guys have got the, the paints that are going to be needed to complete this. Um, I also use a, a little bit of a plastic uh, palette, so to speak, so because I'm going to be standing up. But if you want to use a, a paper plate or anything that you can put your, the paint on that you, know, you, you can keep the paint separate so it doesn't mix up together is fine. Paper plates work great. I also have a, a paper towel in my hand that I'm going to use to wipe the brushes off and a little bit of cup of water just to, uh, to dip the brushes in the water to clean them as we go or to loosen up the paint. Sometimes the paint will get a little thick on us, so we're going to want to loosen that up. Uh, everything else should be ready to go, so uh, if you're ready, we're going to dig in. So what we're going to do is, uh, the way I paint anyway, is uh, I'm going to start with my lighter colors, and then I'll go to my darker colors, and then we'll cycle through those again as, as I want to build up different layers of color or different uh, textures or techniques. Um, I paint fairly light all right I don't put a lot of paint on my brushes to start because I want to kind of sketch in where I want that color to be and like I said we're gonna cycle through these colors so given the second round of for instance yellow you'll have a better opportunity to go in and heavy up those colors as you'll see as we do as the lesson goes on so don't put a lot of paint on the brush at first because it's gonna take a little bit longer to dry and we want to kind of work through it all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a little bit of yellow I'm just gonna put the fine brush down We'll start with a little bit of yellow on, on the wedge brush. And what I want to do is I want to start on this side, okay, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some of this color down. And don't be afraid to go over the black, all right? You'll see I do that quite a bit because I don't want to leave any white in between. So I'm going to paint right over top a little bit of that black. So that'll make sure that those colors actually touch. And then at the end, we have black in our palette that we'll go back and we'll clean that up. All right, so don't worry about for the time being. All right, I'm going to put this in yellow over here as well, down the side of his cheek. All right, when I get to the bottom of the nose here, I'm going to put a little bit of a curve, and I'll bring that down to that line, all right? That's going to indicate the little the, the bump in his face uh, above his, his mouth there. So we want to keep a little bit of a curve on that. All right, and then I'll put a, fill that in yellow. And if you can hear the, the, the scratching of the brush on the canvas, what that's telling us is there's not a lot of paint, and I, I don't need a lot of paint to cover it. So I want to keep that like that. I don't want to actually have a, a real, real ton of paint on this brush because it's just going to take a while to dry, and if, it doesn't, if it's not dry when we go to put our second color or third color on, you're going to smear it together, and that's going to give you a little bit of an undesirable effect, especially with the yellow. All right, we kind of want to keep that pure. All right, let's go over to this side of this eye here in the corner. All right, just a little bit in the corner and then up, up his eyelid. Maybe we'll go halfway. So sort of something like that. I'm going to come up above this black here that's on the canvas and just give a little bit of a rim of yellow around that. All right, we'll bring that over to that corner again. All right, so it's just up to the top of the corner like that. What we're doing is we're just giving a little bit of a hint so when we go over that black with a color, it kind of just softens the edges a little bit. Okay, so we should be looking at something like that. All right, so continuing on with the yellow, what I want to do is I want to get some yellow in his hair. And you notice we're going to leave a lot of his face white, all right? When John plays live, he's got that, that pancake makeup, that white makeup on. So I kind of want to leave that because it's pretty cool. And we've already got the little graphic that he puts on, on his cheek. So we don't want to interfere with color on that. I, I kind of want to... I think it's kind of cool if we leave that white, so we're going we're gonna to stick to leaving his face white, and we're going to put some color in his hair. All right, again, I've got, I'm using the side of the brush, all right, and I'm just, just pushing some color. And you can see it's, there's not a lot on there. You know, I'm let, letting the canvas come through, all right, and it's just an indication. You don't want to really paint the hair too heavy. Okay, so in the direction of his hair, we're just going to put an indication of some color. And this is nice too with the heavier brush, you get a, a fatter line. So utilize that, all right? Let the brush do the work. 
Okay, so you can see I didn't fill in a solid yellow. I let a lot of that white come through. And I want to keep doing that. And we'll give a little bit of indication down bottom here. All right, we'll do the same thing for the hair on this side. All right, you've already got your yellow on the cheek, so let's let's not fill this all in. I want to have some white that separates the two of that, those two of those spaces. And so we'll put a little bit of yellow up top here. Okay. I think what I want to do is put a little bit of yellow underneath his his nose where that the nostril is over here. All right, there's going to be a little bit of a shadow going on there, so we kind of want to indicate it. All right, and then we're going to put this little little bump down here that indicates that that uh that little piece of of, of skin above his lip here. We want to put that in there as well. All right, put a little bit of yellow around this black, around where his beard would be. Again, all that's doing is, is just softening that edge a little bit for us. And you'll notice it more when after you're done painting, when you can actually stand back and look at it, you'll, you'll appreciate those little hints of yellow. All right, let's put a little bit under his lip here as well, right where that, the, uh, his little goatee is over there. We're gonna want some yellow under that also. So let's do that. Again, you can hear how I'm just scratching that color into the canvas. Right, not real heavy. All right, all that that does is give us a little shadow. All right, maybe a little bit over here to show the cheekbone. I think what I want to do is I want to bring this down a little bit here. So let's put a little more yellow on that side. All right, and again, what we're going to do is we're going to let this this yellow dry, and we're going to come back after we put some other colors on and go back to the yellow again. So, so if you've if you want to fill this in as, as I've done here, great. If you want to leave a little bit afterwards, again, we're going to come back with yellow. So don't feel that you're, you're, you know, you're slipping behind or anything if you don't have this completed by this point. All right. Now, what I'm going to do when I go to the other colors, as long as the color is a complementary color, like, for instance, orange, right, which we're going to do next, I'm going to just take my paintbrush on, on my paper towel and just wipe off any extra paint. There's no need to actually rinse this brush off of all the color because the orange and the yellow are a complement. Okay, so with a little bit of orange now, I'm going to come in and I'm going to start putting a little bit of color above that eyelid in the black. All right, I want to hint a little bit that something's going on there. All right, and once, I, once I've done this, you can see where the color is a little heavy. I'm gonna take that color and I'm gonna smear that into that, that yellow. So the yellow is then acted as a little bit of a base color for us. All right, and what it does is it lightens the orange a tiny bit. All right, and every once in a while, what I'd like to do, if you can see it, is I'll leave a little rim of that yellow out so you, you don't cover it with the under color. So it's almost like you've got a layer of yellow and then you have a little bit of orange that's still creeping in there. So I, I kind of think that gives us a, it makes the yellow and the orange kind of, you know, complement each other a little bit more. You know, we'll do that the same way over here. On top of the black, just feather it into that yellow. Alright, just to give a hint that there's another color going on there. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of orange into this side here. And again, I'm not using a lot of orange. I'm letting the, the, the colors feather together. It's just giving me a slight hint of a indication of color. All right, I wanna put a little bit down here as well. All right, and why don't we go in and what we'll do is we'll brighten this up a bit. I'm going to fill this in with orange right over top the yellow. All right. And again, remember, we're not using a lot of paint. All right. We're just basically just enough to cover. Because this area here is actually going to get another color over top of it. So don't spend a lot of time 
making this perfect. There's no need for it. Okay, I think what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of orange around that goatee line there. All right, and I think that'll be it for now for orange. All right, so all you did is really strengthening up the shadows, all right, on the side, the shadow side of his face, a little bit over the eyes in the corners, all right, just to give you a little bit of a roundedness, you know, and, and to, to flow those colors together a little more, it gives him his face a little bit of definition. All right, so what I did now is uh, I, I rinsed my brush off. Again, I'm not worried about it being super clean, but uh, rinse it off in the water that you have and then dry it off. All right, and then we're going to go into a little bit of purple. All right, and what you're going to notice about the purple is it's not going to go, it's going to go on very, a little bit streaky. Okay, and again, don't worry about that because we can go over it twice. And you'll see that a lot like in this section here. So let's, let's go ahead and let's paint this section under his chin purple. All right, and you can all already see how streaky it is. All right, it's very transparent. Most purples are. All right, it's just a transparent color. And in order to get rid of that, you've got to go over it twice or possibly three times, but you're not going to get that solid effect until you let it dry. So that's why I just want to go in for the time being right now, smooth it out as much as you can. All right, and we'll creep up a little bit over here. All right, it's almost like a watercolor, if you will. All right, so I just indicated that there. I tried to keep it as smooth as possible. And if I want to go back later, we can hit that again later. Okay, so now over top of my orange, there's a little finger touch here that should be dry. Okay, I want to add some purple. All right, and I don't want to add a lot. Like we said earlier, we're just going to put a little bit on the brush and we're going to push that around. All right, because I want to see that orange come through. I don't want it to be solid purple. All right, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to paint a little bit on there, and if it gets heavy, just continue to smear it. All right, and that'll push it around. Again, you can see the side of the brush. I'll scratch it right into that canvas and make that as smooth as I possibly can. But it's obvious you can see the orange that comes through. It's not pure purple, all right, and that gives us a nice little colorful shadow, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm going to do the same thing up here. Over top of our orange, a little bit of purple, right? And I want to leave that little yellow line we did. All right, I just want to push some color up top as well. Okay, so you can start to see the shadow part of his face come to life now. Okay, same thing we're going to do under his, his nose where we had the yellow. Let's throw a little bit of purple on top of that. Again, don't cover all the yellow. Just indicate that there's a shadow. All right, I'm gonna come into the corner of his eye with some purple here as well over top the orange. Don't cover your yellow. Leave a little bit of that there. Okay, give a little bit of, just a little bit of color in there. All right, now, pure purple here. We're going to go on top this eyelid. Just a little bit of paint. And right in the middle, I just want to put some color. All right, and we'll bring that right up to the top. All right, see, what I, it's just a very little little indication here. You're not, you're not re getting real heavy on the paint on either side. Just leave the white on either corner and put some purple in the middle. All right, bring it right down to the eyelid. Just a little hint of color. All right, a little, put some over here too for to indicate more of a shadow. All right, I want to put some purple over top of this black. That's the other thing too is the the purple or blues over top of, of black really give it depth. It makes the black look look almost deeper than it actually is and it also pretties it up a bit so we can creep a little bit of purple down this side of his face as well and then I'll put a little bit of that into the hair just so it's not such a hard line all right let the brush do the work all 
All right, the brush will indicate streaks of the purple. You can hear the brush scratching. That'll actually give us a little bit of hair texture. And a little bit down here, a little more shadow on that side. And we'll put a little bit on, on this side of his hair as, as well, because obviously we want to keep that kind of looking a little bit symmetrical for the side of his hair. Okay, I kind of want to color that in purple too. That should be a shadow. So that little indication on his nose, we'll put that in as well. All right, so once we've got the purple, Again, I'm just going to dry off my brush a tiny bit here and get a little bit of blue. All right, and we'll add some blue to some of this. Now you can see the blue is obviously darker, but over top the black, it makes a real nice color. So bring that blue in almost to where the entire, where I had the black. So you've basically painted up that, that black line you've made blue. Right, and that'll give a nice color for that, that black over his eye. You know, think of it almost in terms of eyeshadow. If he was wearing eyeshadow, that's what you've just created over here. All right, I'm going to do that above this eye as well. Clean up some of that orange that I've got. You know, again, I don't want to cover it all, though. I want to let that color stay in there as well. That blue over the black is really cool looking. Now we're going to do his lips as well. So where I've got, where I actually gave you the, his lips in black on the canvas, paint his top lip blue, right down to the black line that defines the lips. So that'll be blue as well. All right, fill it in right up into the black line. So you're just filling that entire area that was black, you're just painting over it in blue. All right, once you've done that, we're gonna come down to the bottom and do the same exact thing. All right, I think what we'll do too is let's creep some of that blue over the black. All right, so we'll color in that we'll let that blue come through. See, because now the blue over the white is going to be a much lighter blue, okay, as opposed to over the black. So if you've colored that entire thing in with one color blue, you've almost got two shades of blue. So keep that like that. That looks kind of cool. All right, and now what I want to do is, again, is I want to come into some of this black down and just pretty some of it up. I don't want to cover it all. I don't want to get real painterly with it. But the blue in the black gives us that really nice color that we did over his eyes. So let's put some of it in here too. And here again, wedge brush. See the side of the brush? If you put the start with here and you go outwards, the paint's going to fade as it, as it dissipates from the brush. So that'll give you that feathered look without having to really blend colors together. Okay, and when it dries, it'll dry a little lighter. And then you've indicated the color. You didn't do a lot of work to get it. And that's pretty much the goal of that. So a little heavier in the middle, and then just push it along. All right, and just by, by natural, you know, paint movement, the paint will leave the brush, go onto the canvas, and then you've got that sort of, that faded blue area. A little more over here. All right, I kind of want to get a little bit of blue in his hair because that'll look kind of cool. And the blue over the yellow almost gives us green. So we're getting a lot of work out of this one color. You know, just a couple little hints of it to show that there is some, some dark shadows in his hair. I'll put some over here. You know, not a lot, not real heavy. Again, that little shadow side here, a little blue over that black makes it pretty look, pretty looking rather. 
All right, so coming back, what I want to do now is I've, uh, I've, I've cleaned off this brush, uh, the wedge brush, as much as possible. Okay, so uh, uh, I'll put that in the water, rinse that off, let that dry. What I want to do now is I want to grab my finer brush. Okay, we're going to put that in, in, in red. Now, obviously, red's going to be a very strong color, and we used it sparingly on, on this portrait. But I do want to indicate some red because it'll give us a nice, nice effect. So right down this edge of his face... I'm gonna run a red line. All right, you see what I did with the cheek? Right down the edge of his cheek. Put some red down there. And it's almost over top of the black that was on the canvas. Continue it down to the bottom here. And the red, you know, once, once the brush gets wet with red, it'll flow a lot easier. But just be patient with it, all right? Put some red on there and go down the side of his face, okay? We went all the way down that one side of his face. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit up here in the eye. All right, and I didn't complete it. I just came down to this side here. I think the red gives us just a nice little uh, a darker edge, but a brighter edge on the side of his face. Fucking computer went dark again. All right, and again, now with the red on the brush, just an indication of red in the hair. Because what you're going to find, especially when you're painting abstract color stuff like this, even more, more so with a portrait, you don't want to leave one area of paint, of color, all right, isolated, all right? I like to move it around. So just this little indication of red over here will balance this out nicely as opposed to just having one section in red. We kind of want to keep moving that color around the canvas. It just creates a better composition. So just a little bit in his hair. All right, let's put a little bit in this corner of his eye as well. All right, see, it balances it out. Makes it just kind of easier to look at. And you'll notice it more when you step away. I don't want to get carried away with the red because I kind of like how it's just giving us a little bit of an accent color. All right, so that's, that's probably all I want to put for that for now. All right, so we'll rinse our, our brush off. You know, let's sit in that water. All right, and I'll come back to my, my wedge brush and see where I want to fill in some other stuff here. Um, let's see. Let's start with a little bit of orange. All right, again, not a lot. So I think I want to put some orange in this eyelid over here on this side. And I'm, I have a real little amount of orange on that brush, just enough to cover the white in the canvas. All right, blend that color in there. All right, we'll give it the same thing on this side. A little more indication on the eyelid. And then we'll hit this corner as well. All right, and what I want is a little bit of orange on that, that area here. All right. See, so it, just, it just gave you a little bit of a shadow, which is exactly what I'm looking for. All right, and the same thing over here. A little heavier up on this side. more streaks in his hair, give it a little more life. You know, nothing heavy, just a little bit, a little up top. All right, I think that's going to be it for that. All right, so my, my paintbrush, if it's like yours, is starting to get a little heavy. So I'm going to dry that off, or wipe that off rather, in the water. All right, try to clean it pretty good because the next color we're going to go to is white. And I kind of want the white to be pretty pure. So we're letting that dry. All right, and as we're doing that, we can put a little bit of white on our paintbrush. And now what I want to do is I want to come around. You can see where the, the black 
the heavy black line you know goes against the white well if we use the white from on our brush we can kind of feather that and soften it all right so that'll give us more of like a, a hair like wispy texture so go right over top that and give it just just a hint all right again let the canvas come through but when you step back you'll notice now it looks like he's got real hair Come all the way down here. Obviously, this is more hair down there. All right, you've just softened that entire edge up. And we're going to do the same on this side as well. Just push some of that white into the black. All right, and you've softened that whole entire thing up. A little more over here. Some streaks, again, little, little wisps of streaks will indicate more hair. Okay. All right. I want to take a little bit of white right here. So what I'm doing, I've got the side of the brush, and right here, I'm just going to touch the brush to the canvas. All right, and that's going to give us a little bit of a highlight, whereas if, if light actually hit his eyelashes, all right, and that'll indicate that there's there's something else there. You won't notice it too much up close, but again, when you walk backwards, you're gonna see it. All right, and I'm gonna do something real similar on this side, all right, with a little bit of a dab from the brush to indicate a highlight to his eye, right in the corner like that. And again, they're not real technical, okay, don't get technical with it. A little line here and a little touch there. All right, and that makes those eyes come to life. We'll do the same thing on this lip, the bottom lip right along the top edge like that all right that'll show me that he's got some highlight on the top of his lip and we want to show it bring it right around all right that'll make that lip pop a little more what i think i want to do too is now again the wedge brush i like the texture it gives me so using the width of the brush all right i'm going to come down here and i'm just going to dab little sections along that that line of that shirt he's got on there the collar little section there and again that gives us a nice rim whereas if if this was leather or something else it has a little bit of a shine to it all right and that's what we're going to indicate with that all right i think i'm going to do it over here too just a little hint of white to show a little bit of a shine on him I'll soften up a little more of that edge there. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do now that we've got our, our fine brush that was soaking in the water, okay, do the same thing now, soak this brush in the water. We're going to get our fine brush and we're going to go into black. And then we're going to clean up some of these lines, like I told you earlier, that we, I kind of, and if they're on your canvas as well, everybody else will be a little different, but you're going to want to clean up some of that black. So let's do that. All right, so we're back with our fine brush now. And now, now black is going to be your best friend here. So black will go in and clean up any of those lines that you've got color on. You know, you're going to want to bring some of those shapes back. You know, don't go crazy and paint over top of, of like the blue where you put on his eyelid, but underneath, okay, I wanted to bring that shape back especially like around here where the nose is. All right, use your black as cleanup. All right, see what I'm doing? I'm just basically bringing back those shapes. And that'll just help define the painting. especially down in here. I want to bring that back. I don't want to get real painterly with it. I kind of like how the, the yellow crept in and it, you see it would actually made it softer. So that's actually cool. So I won't cover it all. You know, I'll just go back and, and just bring back some of it. All right, you see, because it's obviously that's indicating hair. So you, you don't want to get real heavy handed with it.
You know, anywhere where you want to clean up, now's the time to do it. I think I want to make this a little darker up here on mine. So I'll just throw some black over top of that blue and that instantly pushes that back and gives me a shadow. All right, right above that blue line. I think I'll throw some black into that blue. All right, shows more shadow. Same thing down here. This area here, this would technically be the, the underneath part of his lip. So it would be darker if the lip was round, right? So that's how we want to show a little bit of darker on that as well. All right, so you can see it start to come together. And again, this, is, you know, this, this isn't paint by numbers. I, I encourage everyone you know, to use this as a guide, but to make it your own, okay? There's, there, you don't have to follow this exactly. Add more color if you want. You know, go back and add more red, more yellow, more orange, more purple. There's, there's no mistakes here, okay? Everything is, is it's yours. It's the way it wants to be. So I think we're going to leave it at that for now. I encourage everyone to share their paintings with us on Facebook. You can find us on, at, on Facebook at Rockstar Paint Class. I'd love to see how you did, and uh, hopefully you'll be back again soon. So take care. Have a good day.